It's day 1584 of this series. I'm about 4.3 years in. I clipped a lot of weeds on a hike and used them to create an artificial duff layer. Um, duff stands for maybe dead stuff. I don't know where the origins of that came from. But uh, most people grow their plants in rotting organic matter like I once did. One of the first things people do is go out to buy bags of miracle Grow potting mix or other brands of potting mix depending on where you are in the world. And because it's lightweight and people have this natural association that uh, decaying organic matter is very rich because it's made from the things that you're trying to grow, uh, also known as other plants, then it should be really, really good to grow everything in there. But I encountered a lot of problems over the years, uh, just infestations of parasites and bugs. And it seems like very few plants can grow in potting mix. And this is actually one of them. But I've done transplants for all of my plant series, uh, save for one that I'm going to discontinue. I think the cherry of the Hio Grange. But this one, it's thrived. Um, in the beginning, granted, I did lose all of my seedlings, but this one, because of root rot, so even then it was vulnerable. But after it got established after another transplant into a bigger pot of fresh potting mix where I didn't water that much, um, I'm thinking it may have established roots that went all the way down to the bottom of this pot, and because of that it could breathe through the vents at the bottom. And once this thing gets established, it's really hard to stop. So as you can see, there's just so many blades. Um, I'm not losing that many of them. I did lose some from the transplant from last episode. So it's day 1604. Here's some rare daytime footage of my apartment courtyard. Uh, the sun hitting my balcony directly for just these few hours every day in the morning because it's east facing. So I don't get many opportunities with work and all to get footage like this like I once did. When I have more free time. So as you can see I've cut these dying blades at the bottom and added them to the duff layer on top. Although they're basically very hard husks of what they once were withered husks so I'm not sure that there's that much in terms of nutrients or that the nutrients in those can really get in because I don't water from the top um, all that often. Well, all I do is water from the top these days. It's just that the frequency is pretty rare. So these things, um, all the duff layer components on top, we'd have to stay wet for the decomposition process to really accelerate. And I'm not sure like hard and dry leaves like that will uh, necessarily decompose at a comparable rate to everything else that just looks pretty nondescript and brown right now. So after a while, you just st stop noticing the things that you put on the duff layer. It all just kind of uh, withers away and blends into a, a sea of brown. So three days later, I decided I'm discontinuing my dragon fruit series and sacrificing it for fertilizer because this thing doesn't grow the way I wanted it to. So when you look at pictures online, you'll see these neatly pruned dragon fruit orchards of this beautiful succulent where they must have done a lot of trimming to get everything to grow upright sort of like a tree but that's not what happens so this thing sort of struggled early on I think some of it may have come from root rot um, but at the same time there are all these little tentacles slash root looking structures that would pop out and create lesions I can only compare that to the daughters the parasitic plants that I see on chaparral and desert plants in California. It's basically daughters are these uh, orange yellowish tentacles that end up looking like instant noodles all over plants and what they do is they have modified root structures that burrow into the stems of these plants, uh, host plants, and they suck out all the nutrients they need. Um, thinking from you know the vascular tissue of the plant and they don't need to photosynthesize so they can be any color they want so those things remind me of what we're seeing here so I chopped everything up I'm thinking these are fleshy succulents there must be a lot of nutrients in those chunks um, compared to just leaves 
and you know inflorescences uh, dried out stems and things like that on day 1687 I was driving home from Las Vegas Nevada going through this mountain pass that goes up to about 5200 feet elevation and this is the valley after the mountain pass which is descending to around 4,000 feet and less above sea level so I think this is actually the first time I've seen Joshua trees covered in snow uh, Joshua trees around here uh, around the outskirts of Las Vegas are for the most part very small compared to the ones in California now morphology of Joshua trees is also different uh, there are some that are um, medium in size but none that are impressive and you can see all the different shapes and sizes uh, it's just a fascinating tree because every one you see is different so it's day 1703 growth has been very impressive going into winter there's this very thick duff layer and it seems like lately clovers of various kinds are the first things to make a move and they seem to respond very well with this thick duff layer. There's some moss too and other things growing in there. So uh, it's looking pretty rich down there, but I'm not sure how fast the nutrients are getting into the soil. With something that's slow growing, like a Joshua tree, it's just really hard to read if what you're doing is truly working. In this case, I think it's doing fine and shooting out lots of leaves but by the time I were to notice something wrong, um, it would take a long time to adjust. So it doesn't seem like I can really do anything wrong with this Joshua tree at this point. Um, I could provide it with more soil and sand mixture for its roots to grow in. I'm sure the root system is much more developed now, but I decided at this point um, with winter approaching to remove the organic duff layer on top after having seen the power of miracle Grow chemical fertilizer which I used once upon a time but back then everything was uh, using potting mix so one of these uh, segments that I cut of the dragon fruit plant sprouted a root um, that's pretty impressive because it's, it was just sitting on the top so it was in a section that faced furthest away from the Sun in the shadow so that's just an interesting tidbit live example of if I were to try to propagate succulents in the future from little cuttings like that of course I wouldn't take a cutting that small but it's nice to know that in the right conditions and shade with plenty of moisture a tiny little uh, fragment of a cut, unintentional cutting like that can grow so that's pretty good um, I decided to discontinue that dragon fruit series like I said because I want something that grows more upright like a tree and then when I saw it had this odd parasite and if any of you can tell me what that is I'd be grateful then yeah I, I just didn't want that to continue and it's sprawling all over the place so it's day 1751 uh, there are little roots sticking out of the top somehow even though I removed the duff layer so that's kind of odd I don't know what's going on here I feel uh, obligated to cover that in a little bit of sand and soil but um, yeah that dragon fruit series was uh, it was just a mess so I decided not to continue plus not many people were watching it so you can see there's still a lot of uh, things going on like maybe algae and moss and this is the beginning of February in 2020 so it's a few months away from uh, being at the five-year mark for this series and this thing has an impressive green funnel in the middle uh, it's growing a lot more straight than it used to every few weeks uh, if I move things around I put this back in a different position to um, try to get this thing to grow straight I don't want phototropism bringing it in one direction I mean it's not perfectly straight the trunk but it's close enough compared to what it was before so in the first few years I grew this in potting mix and as potting mix decays especially over that time frame of a few years um, it just decays to nothing so there's no more support it's a very light mixture so there's a tendency for all your plants to fall over and I've seen this in uh, landscaping 
uh, cement, uh, I would say planters, they're, they're huge, but right outside my lobby at work, um, it's an old building, they have these, uh, I don't think they're cycads or anything, but some kind of palm, and most of them fall over because they have no structural support, especially as they get a lot heavier. So as in the past, I'm adding miracle Grow again, but this time dissolved uh, more or less in the right ratios. Before I would just kind of sprinkle this blue powder on top and then water, which uh, I suppose it worked in a lot of cases, but at the same time, if it's too concentrated, you could be burning your plant. But as for this Joshua tree, I'm not really worried about any of that because it's such a tough plant. It survived basically everything I've thrown at it. And it's never gotten full direct sun, like I've said many times, so that won't change anytime soon, even if I move. Um, because, uh, yeah, unless you have your own house and yard, you're just not going to get full sun. It's rare to see any kind of like condo or townhouse or apartment balcony that gives you access to full sun. So I found these two worms uh, writhing around in the miracle Grow afterwards, and I'm not sure if these are earthworms. You get a better look later when this all drains away, but um, I'm not quite sure how this happened because as it looked to me when I mixed the soil in from the outside, uh, I didn't see anything alive. Uh, they must have just hatched from invisible eggs. So uh, not quite what I expected. I don't know what their function is, but uh, I just kind of left them in there because uh, you know I didn't want to deal with them. And maybe they can help with the aeration. This 50% uh, sand, 50% uh, soil mixture. I wouldn't say this is like a clay soil mixture. It was kind of in a construction pile. So I would say the clay content in this mixture is much lower than in my other pots where it's a very heavy uh, reddish orange sort of clay soil that's more typical from the hills around here. But I didn't expect this thing to congeal to be such a hard mass, but I think the Joshua tree is fine with this. Um, I won't bother with another transplant. I could move this entire mass that it's in and just cut away the pot and put it in... Uh, a surrounding mass of sand and soil that's much bigger but that would weigh maybe several hundred pounds and just be really cumbersome so unless I settle in a place where I could just plant this in the ground and have lots of land uh, it's gonna live in pots for the foreseeable future so as you can see here after the miracle grow water has drained away they do sort of look like earthworms although the size uh, compared to earthworms in the East Coast is like I don't know, like a hundredfold difference or something like that. So if you could tell me what these are, I'd be very interested and grateful. Uh, thanks for watching this episode, and perhaps I'll have a compilation episode past the five-year mark at some point in 2020. Thanks for watching.